We are believing you will be able to go home safely and everything will be just like you have left it. Your electricity is still on. Everything is in its proper place in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for it. Thank you for Pastor David and First Lady Nezra in their absence. They are away spending time with God, working on their marriages. He imparted into us, so he also have others imparted into him. That is a blessing, and we thank God for that. We thank God for Apostle Johnson. She's dealing with the weather on today. We ask God to continue to bless her and heal her. Even in her absence, we are yet praying and we are standing in the gap. Thank God for my husband that's in the midst, a man of God. I thank God for him. And our Facebook viewers, we thank God for you. We thank God that you are here and you're sharing with us. As we get in the word and see what God is saying for us on to, to this day. Our topic has been engaging increase through intercessory prayer. Our objective is to help you realize your authority in prayer. To help you realize prayer is a dialogue, not a monologue. You're talking, God is talking. He's giving you instructions of what to do, where to go, how to proceed in your situation and in your circumstances. To help you realize in order to win in this life, you must pray. If Jesus prayed, we have to pray also. But we can make it through prayer. We are strengthened through prayer. We can battle the situation on our knees in prayer. And God can turn things around. When we look at Luke 23 and 34, then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Jesus interceded on our behalf to the Father. Because at the time, we didn't know what we were doing. They didn't know what they were doing. But he yet forgave them. They beat him. They pierced his side. And yet he said they didn't know what they were doing. Sometimes when people do things to us, and if all that would have happened, for real though, would your first words, your last testament be to forgive them? No. But with the help of God, no matter what they do, no matter how they treat you, you can say, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. Ephesians 2 and 4 says, but God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love, which he has loved us. The fifth verse, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved. The sixth verse, and raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have a seat of authority because of what Christ have done for us. We are seated in heavenly places with Christ. Jesus is yet interceding on our behalf. And Romans 8 and 34 tells us this. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Jesus is very active on our behalf in heaven. He is pleading our cause before the Father like a defense lawyer on our behalf. Jesus is interceding for us while Satan the accuser is, a, is accusing and pointing out our sins before God. So we can't say nobody praying for us. Because Jesus is praying for us. 
and not just praying for us, but praying that we win and that we succeed in this life. Because he's been down here. A man without sin, but yet sin was poured on him. My sins, your sins was poured upon him. So he can relate. He understands the things that we go through. And even when the devil tried to count us out and said, they ain't going to be nothing. You see what they did last night. Yet accusing us. And pointing out our sins. But God said, no. Nah. Jesus paid the price for that. And I'm going to recognize his blood on their situation. I'm going to recognize his blood on their circumstances. And I'm going to give them strength to battle and to win in prayer. Because Jesus is yet interceding on their behalf. Intercessory prayer is the act of praying on the behalf of others. Jesus prayed for us, and we have to pray for others. We have to pray for ourselves that we can make it. Situations come, circumstances come that you might want to give up, but you got to fight it through prayer and yet hold on and stay. Eight things that intercessory does. Intercessory calls us to eternalize God's word and changes us. You can't pray and stay the same. It's going to change you. Psalms 119 and 11 said, Your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's why we hide the word. That's why we read the word. That's why we meditate on the word. That we can have the, the word in our hearts that we might not sin against him. Two, intercessory unites our hearts to people and places that we pray for. Deuteronomy 32, 30, part A says, how can one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight? As you are praying and as you are believing God, it unites me with you when I pray for you. I can feel what you're, you're feeling. I can feel what you're dealing with based on me calling out your name. Three, intercession renews our faith and our hope. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I'm yet believing God no matter what I see. I can't look at the circumstances. I can't listen to the report of facts that the doctor might have said, because I am yet believing God and his word saying, by his stripes, I am healed. And I got to declare that until that is manifested in my life. No matter what, whatever you are standing upon, intercession imparts life. John 6 and 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profit is nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. When we begin to pray for somebody else, it imparts life. It imparts life in that dead situation. We speak life over their lives despite of what they're doing. Despite how they are acting, we believe the word of God, and we speak life into that situation. Five. Intercession makes a long-term impact beyond this age. It don't stop when we stop. It don't stop even when we leave this earth. Revelations 5 and 8. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Our prayers are going to have a lasting impact long beyond our lives. Some prayers that we are standing on now and walking in is because of our fathers and our mothers, our grandparents, that they pray. It's prayers that you're praying for your generation right now that you haven't even seen yet. 
but you're believing God is going to use them. You're believing God is going to work on their behalf. You might see them, you might not. But your prayers is as incense unto the Lord. Six, intercession humbles us. Second Chronicles 17, 7 and 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will hum up themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. As we humble ourselves, he's going to heal our land. As we seek his face, he's going to forgive us. In our world today, right now, we're hearing of President Trump over in Syria, how we're bombing them. We need our land healed. We see in the state of Flint, state of Michigan, the city of Flint, how they're stopping the water pots, how they're stopping giving people water. Some people can afford to buy water, but what about that one that can't afford to buy water? What about that one that can't even make it to get water? We have to pray. It is so much going on. The enemy is busy. But as we humble ourselves, the word says, as we seek his face and turn, he's going to heal our land. I believe that. I stand upon that that he can do it. Seven, intercession changed the spiritual atmosphere. Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you made him alive, which were dead in trespasses and sins. And once we walked according to this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who works now in the sons of disobedience, a monk also, whom we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were nat nature, children of wrath, just as the others. It changed our atmosphere. As our parents prayed for us and believed for us, our nature was changed into the nature of Christ. It can change things. We can go into the heavenlies and it can change our city and our nation. We can stand against the powers of darkness because the word said we're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against powers and principalities in high places. But as we begin to pray, and as we begin to call on the name of the Lord, he began to change situations and circumstances around on our behalf. Number eight, intercession causes multiple blessings to return to the intercessor. Luke 6, 37 and 38 says, Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and you shall be given. Give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. We often use this in offering time. Not that it's wrong. But this, the text before that, it was telling us how we judge people, how we condemn people. And it's saying how we measure, that's going to be measured back to us. How we treat other people, that's how you're going to get treated back. And when it says, it says, press down, running over, and shaking together. 
the same that you measure out is going to be measured back to you. Prior to that scripture, that verse, it says, if they ask for food, give them food. If they ask for your coat, give them your coat. If they ask for forgiveness, give them forgiveness. Whatever they're standing in need of, it's our job to give it to them. And if we do, the measure I measure out, that's the same measure I'm going to get back. So if your measure is short, that means you're giving it out short. If your measure is long, then you got to consider, I am doing what God has told me to do. If I only love those that love me, what am I doing? But if I can love the unloving, then that's when I'm really doing something. If I can be good to those that be good to me, then what am I really doing? With that, we're just, we just swapping. You good to me, I'm good to you. <laughs> but when we can love despite, because he was our example. Because he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. The word I already tell us, we're not fighting against flesh and blood. So if you're looking at me and you're fighting against me, you got it wrong. It's the powers and the principalities that's trying to come against me. So when you know that, it's easy to love you. Because I don't know what situation you're dealing with. I don't know what circumstances that you are facing. That's why we have to intercede on people's behalf. People are dying daily. Some are literally taking their own lives because they feel they have no hope. But we are their hope. Jesus prayed for us. He even prayed for those that was going to believe that at the time was not even believers. Say, so united we stand, divided we fall. Unless two or three agree, you can't stand. In your home, unless you and your spouse agree, touch and agree, you're not going to be able to stand. Because there's going to be a division there where the enemy is trying to come in. With your kids, we got to stand united. They're facing a lot of things. And we have to pray and stand in the gap. We have to call their names out individually that God will intercede and bless them. Stuff that they're facing, we did not have to face in school. You don't want to use the bathroom because these girls looking at you. Nonsense. These teachers is messing with, with, with our kids. Nonsense. But this is the devil trying to take hold of our young people. They're dealing with, with bullying. They're dealing with so much stuff. They're having peer pressure. We try to tell them to live right. But then the voices in their head is, no, you don't got to do this. A little weed ain't going to hurt. A little sex ain't going to hurt. So we got to pray and we got to stand in the gap for them that they will be able to stand when temptation comes their way. Because we're not going to always be there. But our prayers can be there. Our intercession can be there. As we call their name out. As we call the city of Flint out, God can turn it around, no matter what we see. As we call our mayor's name out, that she can hear the voice of the Lord. Our governor, that he can hear the voice of the Lord. Our president, that he can hear the voice of the Lord. When you call upon somebody's name, you are placing a demand on their ability. Too, too much, we put confidence in people. You can place, in place of their name, you must be able to measure the power behind their name. A person writing a check places a demand on their name. If they have the proper funds in the bank, then it's enough power to meet 
the demand. The power back in the name of Jesus is the power of the almighty God himself. So when you call on the name of Jesus, he has the ability to do it. He's going to come through. And you got to be confident in that. Of whatever you are believing God for. That you are going to stand until that prayer is answered. You are not going to give up. You're going to stay in the birthing position until you bring forth that child, until that that prayer is answered on your behalf. That's why we have to know the word. That's why we have to stand upon the word, because the devil is yet accusing, and yet telling you God ain't going to do it. God loves this person more than he loves you. Why? No, he don't. He loves me. He sent his son to die for me. And we got to know our proper stand and our authority in prayer. So when he comes, we can shut him up. I am seated in high places with God. I have authority. And you got to walk with a confidence that you know you have that authority. You got to know that he listens to you. You got to know that he answers your prayer. He don't have a respect of person. If you know he's done it for someone else, he's able to do it for you based on his word. And you have to stand on that. You have to know that. The mighty powerful name of Jesus is available to you. You got to be aware of your rights and your privileges. You got to know what he's done. You got to read the book to know what you're entitled to. It's our will and our testament. It's what we're entitled to. If you never open it, you will never know. What's your authority? What can you do in prayer? We can come against strongholds in prayer. We can fight the good fight in prayer. We can touch and agree in prayer. The enemy is trying to take our joy, trying to take our finances. But we can stand against him in prayer. His job is trying to isolate you, kill, steal, and destroy. But God said, I come that you might have life. And not just have life, but have that life abundantly, knowing who you are in Christ. He didn't leave us defenseless. He has given us authority to rule, and through prayer, we exercise that authority. And we use our authority. We can actually subdue powers and principalities. Ephesians 3 and 10. To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of a God might be made known by the church through the principles and powers in the heavenly places. We can do it. We can stand upon his word. What he said he will do, he will do on our behalf. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. Let's not forget it. Everything in it, every person in it, he has given us dominion. We are workers together with him. How do we pray for somebody else? How do we intercede on their behalf? Colossians 9, Colossians 1. 9 through 14. Paul was praying for the Colossians. He prayed for the Ephesians church. 
But with this one, it really talks about everything pertaining to that individual. Let's read. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard of it, we did not cease to pray for you and to ask that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. When somebody say pray for them, this is an awesome prayer. They did not cease praying. They kept on praying. This is the prayer that God has been giving me to pray over my sons, over my family, over different things. Because I can't instruct them in which way to go. I don't know. They got to hear from God. It said to know the will of God. It says, all spiritual wisdom and knowledge, the mind of God for the good and the best situation for their life. He said, filled with the knowledge of his will. Who don't need that? Two, that we will walk worthy of the Lord, that as believers we will represent him, that our lifestyle, other people will be able to see Christ on the inside of, of us. That we are representing him with the, even the quality of life that we have. Three, that we will impact others. That whatever we do, we will be able to bear fruit to every good work and increasing knowledge of God. How many want good works? How many want their lives to have an impact on somebody else? And when you're praying for your significant other, your loved one, or just praying for somebody, this is a good prayer. Asking God to lead them in every direction. Because when I look at it, who's to say our impact is a thousand, our impact is a million, whatever impact. But if you get one person, that mother, that husband, and they teach it to their kids, then their kids have kids. You have a generation that's living for God, that knows the principle of God, that's walking in the authority that God has given them. That's an impact. If you allow me to reach a thousand, great. But if I can reach that one, and that one can have impact in their situation, in their circumstance, change their household around, it will be worth it in the end. For to experience the power of God, indwelling strength not to give up, nothing impossible with God. We need that strength. With patience and long suffering, stuff comes. And sometimes you want to give up and you want to throw in the towel. But you're praying that God, you will give me the strength to hang in there when it get hard. Hang in there when I don't see my way. Hang in there when I don't know my way. I need your strength in this situation. Because we've all been there. You don't have all that you can take. You want to throw in the towel. But that person interceding, strength can come from nowhere because somebody is praying and standing in the gap and praying on your behalf that you will make it and strengthen you in your your darkest night, which you might consider dark. And five, to give thanks when things are difficult. He didn't promise it was going to be easy. 
but he said he would be with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I'm right there for you. Sometimes people is still in your presence, but they don't forsake you. They don't left. They have forsaken you. Because emotionally, I can still be here. Physically, I can still be here, and emotionally, I can be gone. How you say the body's here, but nothing's upstairs? Because they're gone. But he said, I'm not going to leave you, nor I'm going to forsake you. I'm going to be with you to the end. But he never promised it was going to be easy. So if you're looking for it easy, you're looking for a promise that is not in the word. That's not in the word. If he went from suffering to glory, we're going to have some suffering too. We're going to be partakers of that. And we don't get to, we don't get to choose what, what it is. Because if we did, would it actually be suffering? No. It would be a bed of ease. Everything would be okay, smooth sailing. But if the father didn't allow his son to have smooth sailing, we're not going to have smooth sailing. So sometimes they're going to say, Hosanna you, and then next they're going to say, crucify you. Just like they did. All that he did. And it's something. He fed the people. He clothed the people. But they yet turned their back on him. He picked the 12 and yet picked a devil in the 12. So everybody that's with you ain't with you. But you got to know that. But he said, I'm going to be with you. I'm not going to leave you. That's a guarantee we can stand upon because everybody else is changing, literally. Some people, if you love me, I love you. If you don't love me, I don't love you. If you do what I want you to do, I love you. As soon as you do something different, I don't want to be bothered. Conditional, but he loves us unconditional. We was messing up. We was not living right, but he yet loved us. When we got in certain situations, when we was with our friends, we denied them. No, no, I ain't no saint. No, no. Why? Because that's what our actions show. I'm living just like they living. So who were the them? We were the them. Forgive them. Because we didn't know what we were doing. But when we came to our senses, we stopped being that dog that was throwing up vomit and turning around and eating it back up. We stopped it because of what he did for us, because of the love that he shed upon us. We serve a mighty God. That's why we live this life. So in this prayer, don't cease to pray. Pray this over your kids. When somebody say pray for me, pray that over them. Because they need the knowledge of God. They need to know the will of God in their situation because they got to walk it out. They need to walk worthy of the call that God has put on our lives, that we can represent him. That people can see Christ on the inside of us, even in the midst of our trials and our situations. I'm yet believing God because my situation is going to line up to the word of God. And that we can impact others in what we say and how we live and what we do that we can bear fruit in every good work and yet increasing knowledge of him. That we can experience the power of God 
breakthrough in our situations. That we have that, I won't give up. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight. And I'm going to yet give thanks in difficulty because this is the will of God concerning me. He didn't say it was going to be easy. But he said he will be there with us. He will go through the storm and the rain with us. God is good. Jesus is yet interceding on our behalf. You're going to make it. You're going to be all that God has called for you to be. Eyes haven't seen or ears have heard what God has in store for you. Those that are listening on Facebook, we pray for you. We intercede and we stand in the gap. That whatever is trying to hold you back, we plead the blood of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. That it will loosen you. That you will stand upon his word in difficulties, in different situations and circumstances. He loves you. He died for you. If you don't know him, you just got to ask and confess with your mouth. He said, we shall be saved, that he sent Jesus, that he raised him from the dead just for me. And ask him to take lordship over your life. That you're tired of doing it by yourself. There's help on board to help us to live this life. Congregation, I'm going to ask that we all stand. I'm going to ask that you go get somebody by the hand. Evil can't win. The hand that you are holding, you don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know the circumstances. But I want you to intercede on their behalf that God will make a way. If they feel like giving up, God will have you strengthen that hand that you hold. We are touching and agreeing that God's will be done in their lives. We are decreeing and declaring that they will be all that God wants them to be. As you pray for your neighbor, as we pray for the city of Flint, we are here believing. Eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard what God is about to do in this city, what God is about to do in our state, what God is about to do in our nation. We're not going to give up. We're going to pray it through until we see change in the lives of our people. Our communities are better because we are there. We are standing in the gap. So whatever you're standing in need of, inbox us. We're praying for you. That one that just lost a loved one. The God of comfort comforts you in the name of Jesus. That one that's dealing with sickness. He said, by his stripes you are healed. It might not be suddenly, but if you can walk a little further than you walked on yesterday, thank you. But just know that by his stripes you are healed and made whole and complete in Jesus. The battle that's in your home, take it up in prayer. Believe God for that spouse. Believe God for those children. Believe God for that job. Believe God. He hears your prayers. 
He's a God that answer prayers. He's a God that's concerned about everything that concerns you. Don't let the devil tell you anything else. Hang in there. Help is on the way. Hang in there. He's yet praying and interceding on your behalf. You're going to stay. Because we are praying for you. We are praying for breakthrough. We are praying strongholds to come down. The Lord reigns. And his will shall be done in this city, in our lives, in our homes. He's in control. No matter what the enemy tried to bring or try to do, we serve a God that is greater than that. Hallelujah. A God that can do more than we can ever think or dream of. Don't lose your hope. Don't give up. Fight the good fight of faith until it is manifested in your situations. Don't stop. Yet believe God. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for each individual that's represented here. You see the needs. You see the area where the enemy is just trying to attack. We bind it up. We come against it. We plead the blood of Jesus right now in the name of Jesus. Those that are watching by Facebook, what you see them, you know them in their house. We touch and agree with them in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree for their healing in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree for their restoration in the name of Jesus. We touch and agree for their finances in the name of Jesus. That loved one that they're praying for. We are touching and agree that you will bless them in their situations. That you will send somebody to them that can help them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That they will turn from their wicked ways and acknowledge you. Because while we were yet sinners, you sent Jesus to die for us. There is nothing too hard for you and we thank you for it we declare and decree that the joy of the lord is our strength we declare and decree we are going from glory to glory in your presence we declare and decree we are more than conquerors through christ jesus that gives us the strength we declare in degree, we are the head and we are not the tail. We are above only and we are not beneath. We declare in degree, we shall live and we shall not die. And declare the works of the Lord. We declare in decree. Split is fixed whole and filled in the name of Jesus. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you are going to do. We thank you for blessing our homes. We thank you for blessing our mind and our mindset. What an enemy had tried to come in. We plead the blood of Jesus afresh. And we thank you for what you are going to do. We give it to you. We put it in your hands. We thank you for loosening. We thank you for what you have done and what you are doing. We pray in your name, in the name of Jesus, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.